okay, I've got a piece of uh, crystalline bismuth. Uh, so you can actually take sort of pellets of bismuth metal um, and actually heat it up. I, I've seen people, I've seen photos of people doing this on their uh, home uh, sort of cookers, their, their ovens and things. Um, but you can make them in the lab. Uh, so you get crystals of bismuth out which look like this, which is actually really, really pretty. And there are websites where people have made lots of these crystals and they're selling them for collectors and things, which is quite nice. Bismuth is interesting because it is the heaviest element that is not radioactive. You can imagine the nucleus, the centre of the atom, rather like a blob of water. And if you imagine a drop of water, as it gets bigger and bigger, it becomes unstable and will easily split into two. And it just happens that bismuth is the larger size that's not radioactive. Uh, the interesting thing about bismuth actually is that it's long been regarded as being, uh, bismuth 209 has long been regarded as being the, um, the heaviest non-radioactive element. And technically actually, uh, that's not true. Uh, it was actually f uh, found, I think, ooh, about five years ago now, it was actually proven to be uh, an alpha emitter. So it's actually a radioactive element and emits alpha particles. So here is a very old sample of bismuth. This is a bismuth rod and you can see it's packed up really quite nicely. But we can open this and we can go in and have a look to see what it is, you know, so. Here, if we pull it out carefully. <laughs> uh, but actually, uh, it's, it's kind of uh, a little bit uh, sort of pedantic, I suppose, because uh, the half-life of uh, this bismuth 209, uh, they found it's actually about is it 1.9 times 10 to the power 19 years, it's half-life. So that's the t time it takes for, say, a kilo of bismuth for 500 grams of it to decompose to its, its daughter element, which I think is thallium 205, if I'm right. Um, and so that half-life uh, is actually longer than the uh, current age of the universe. So for all intents and purposes, it's still quite stable. I think they actually call it metastable. It is used um, particularly in an alloy which called wood's metal, which is a very low melting um, alloy, will even melt in boiling water. And there were endless practical jokes where you could buy wood's metal spoons and you give it to somebody to stir their tea and it melted in their tea and they looked surprised. See bismuth. Yeah. Really old sample from Johnson Matthew. Now let's see if we can find out what the purity is. So it's a 99.9% really quite nice sample of bismuth rod. Bismuth surprisingly is not very poisonous compared to the fact that um, lead is very poisonous and so there are some suggestions that we should be exploring more the chemistry of bismuth as a catalyst because if it works well then it could be used in chemical processes with much less danger than some of these other materials. So if we can push it out from this old paper packaging and you can see it's packaged really quite nicely here you can see the bismuth metal itself. Bismuth is used is in catalysis to, to attenuate um, selective reactions, so perhaps we might use bismuth with a platinum group metal like palladium or platinum even to make chemistry go a little bit more selectively. It's a really beautiful element though, really nice. So we'll pop that back in there nice and safe. Why have you got that? Where'd that come from? Uh, I bought it because it's so pretty. Um, I bought it uh, from a shop, I can't remember actually which shop now, but I collect these sorts of things, They're very very pretty looking sort of metallic things and crystals. Um, and as you can see it's really nice and iridescent, so it's, it's got a tarnished oxide layer um, it shines like sort of, you know, all the, all the colours of the rainbow, which is really, really pretty in my opinion. Lovely.